So I'm about 90% done with the engine package. Uh, the goal for this thing was to ensure that I could install the whole motor, transaxle, turbo, wiring harness, and so on, all in one, one go. It makes it a lot easier to do maintenance and things when you can uh, drop the whole assembly out in one piece, do the work, and put it back together. So you don't have to like remove the turbos or remove accessories in order to get the motor in and out. Uh, one of the things I've done here is you can see this, this pass through here in black. Basically it runs right through the accessory drive here. And I'll flip the motor over in a little bit and show you more, but um, this is, protects the tubes and such to run through. But basically this is the coolant feed lines. There's actually another one that I don't have here yet. And then two oil lines that will run through here as well. And this runs up the trans tunnel down the center into the radiators, into the oil cooler, etc. So basically all my connections are kind of like a bulkhead right here. So I can just uh, disconnect uh, the hoses right here and pull the whole assembly out. Uh, so I'm not like disconnecting hoses all over the place. They're all kind of one in one spot. Um, I said 90% done. You can see this tape. I always put tape on stuff that's not complete. Like if I leave a bolt loose or something like that, I don't just rely on my memory because my memory sucks. Um, I always put a piece of tape, whether it's green or blue, um, so I remember. In this case, I don't have the crank bolt in it yet. I'm going to wait until I put the transaxle on to tighten that thing up. Uh, but the accessory drive turned out pretty good. Um, I think it's going to work well. I've got good belt wrap, that kind of stuff. Um, the only thing I'm a little worried about is the length of the run here all the way across. I don't know, it's about 18 inches. Uh, I did find plenty of production cars that have runs that long, but when you start dealing with harmonics and other crazy things like that, you just never know what you're going to get. So I'm actually going to add a pulley right here off this stud um, and just to, to lightly touch right here just to help with the belt slapping around. Like I said, it won't really hurt anything. It's, I mean, this is all protected here. Um, I just don't want it bounce around too much and possibly throwing a belt. So that should help. And then, you know, there's other ways to solve the problem too. If I have bigger issues, I can always uh, do the routing a little bit different or even uh, put a pulley underneath a small one and kind of push this upward to put it in tension to make it a little tighter. But I'm thinking it'll be all right. I'll definitely be putting a GoPro on this thing uh, when I fire it up and do my first, uh, first runs just to see if I see any movement there. Uh, other stuff on the side of the motor. I uh, just kind of get the wiring about halfway done. Uh, I switched, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, depending you look at it, from uh, Holly to Motec. So I had to redo a little bit of the wire, but pretty much everything's the same. Got everything kind of tidied up here out of the way with P-clamps and such. Uh, this is one part that's really tight with the firewall. So I actually have this aluminum bracket with the wire for the cam position sensor uh, zip-tied. Uh, you can see I had heat shielding on this tube. You'll see a lot of that. Uh, lots of heat shielding all over the place, actually. Um, you can see my ugly aluminum welds. And, and if you've been following my Instagram, you'll see this is my first attempt at aluminum welding. And it kind of got better and better as I went. And then finally I had to build the radiator and some other stuff, and it got decent. But surprisingly enough, I did a leak check on this and stuff, and none of them leak. I'm actually going to do a leak down the whole motor, but I'll probably put it in, make sure I didn't miss anything. But they're ugly but functional, so uh, not, not too big of a deal. Uh, kind of going around. Oh, yeah, this is funny. So I kept wiring things backwards. Odd even because the motor's backwards the intake's backwards so when i was doing injectors and stuff i kept getting things backwards so i labeled it so i stopped doing that um as we go around the side here lots more heat shielding stuff um got plug wire boots uh this stuff's awesome they call it lava something from uh I forgot the name of the company but anyway it's not fiberglass it's, it's like almost like silk and so it doesn't get in your skin and stuff it's really easy to wrap forms really well i suppose it works even better than standard fiberglass wrap um, these are actually factory LSA headers or manifolds. Uh, thank you to Sam and Brian from AMP. They let me rummage through their huge pile of stock manifolds to find ones that would fit. They came out really well. I mean, it, it's it's just really tight, nice packaging here. I uh, just basically put a V-band, stainless steel V-band on it. You can't see all the detail because it's the heat wrap, but and then added the wastegate. So everything's super compact and tight up against the motor. And you'll see when I I'll flip the motor over here in a little bit and show you how close everything is. But Super compact, fits in the engine bay real well, easy to work on, got plenty of room. Um, I can almost stand kind of between the motor here when the motor's in the car and the, and the car itself, so pretty good clearance. Got plenty of room for good size air filter, all the stuff that really matters for performance. Uh, more heat shielding stuff you can see here. Um, this is the water line and then the boost line that runs to the wastegate. Um, I'll go through this heat 
uh, shielding where it's near the turbo, another piece of heat shielding there, and then there'll be a, a blanket over this as well. Um, this is water-cooled turbo, a Zona. Um, I plan on tracking the car so I need to keep things as cool as possible. Uh, the wastegates are water-cooled as well, so I got water running through it. And now the valves and those things are really good. I mean, they're, I'm pretty sure they're Inconol or something like that, some high-end uh, stainless, but the diaphragms are still, you know, a, a rubber. You know, I think they're fi they got like a carbon or fiberglass mesh in them. But at the end of the day, uh, the rubber will break down with temperature over time. So the water running around the diaphragm how it keeps it cool and hopefully will be add some reliability. You can kind of get in here and you'll probably see more when I flip the motor over. But everything's pretty tight, but e pretty easy to work on. You can see this brace at the back of the accessory drive runs up to there. Uh, I'll show you the other brace and some other stuff when I flip the motor over here in a second. Just some more views of the accessory drive. You can see where. It's really thick. I built it up with several pieces um, because you can see how thin it gets right there as it clears the alternator and has to be like that to clear the car. Um, but it's super rigid with the braces. Again, I'll show you some of the braces here in a second, but everything lines up real well. Um, like I said, wiring not finished yet. I'm actually going to make the transaxle uh, before I finish the wiring because the wiring is going to go around the transaxle real tight, especially here in the back, uh, all this stuff is going to be wrapped, actually go down and around the transaxle, so you won't see it when it's in the car. Uh, all the main wiring harnesses are going to kind of down along the bottom, uh, again, just to clean up the look of the car. And then all of it will be terminated with this bulkhead fitting right here. This is a sweet piece, so it passes through starter and alternator, and I've got 120 pins to work with, including two four gauge pins, so I can pass a lot of power through this thing, uh, a lot of amperage. And uh, actually overkill, I probably need half as many pins, but um, this is going to be room to grow or just whatever. Um, but that way I can actually, the same way I can disconnect, you know, all the hoses with just those connections right there, I can disconnect this one connector and every single electrical connection on the motor will, will break in one connection along with these two studs for the high power stuff. So high current stuff, we'll have like a starter and alternator on there. But um, the four gauge pins we can use for things like the uh, coils. You know, we pull a lot of, I think they're, they can peak up something like 60 amps. Um, I doubt I'll see that because of the dwell time I'll have set up, but it's possible. So a uh, really nice connector. allows basically easier maintenance. Then the day, uh, I'm going to have this thing in and out. I'm going to break stuff. That's life. So I want to make sure that I do have that can to make it as easy to work on as possible. Uh, you can see here another on this other side, here's the uh, water line to the turbo. You see it's stiff. Like it sticks out like that. It's actually silicon tubing. What I've done is you can see right here, I've run a piece of stainless wire inside this, which keeps it out a little bit. So it stays away from the header. So you can see that. So that way, you know, it'll always stay out. You know, no matter what, it gets hot, it won't, it won't droop. And I did the same thing on the other side with that line. It's got stainless wire in it, so it stays kind of out there, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip this thing over so you can see some more stuff on the bottom. All right, so here's the motor upside down, some of the stuff might make a little more sense. Uh, you can see here I ran metal feed actually for the oil line near the housing and then switched to you know braided line here with a little heat shielding but that way I run the metal line right next to the turbo uh, keep anything from melting etc. Again doing track days and things in this car everything's gonna get so hot it's gonna be an issue. Um, a little more on this side you can kind of see this, this path here I talked about you can see the coolant lines, how they run through, and there'll be another coolant line coming from the other side, kind of similar uh, run up through here from right there. It'll wrap around the motor mount, come up through here, and really quite a bit of room to work with. And then have a couple oil lines here as well. You can see how I ran the uh, rear oil line through this little, this little trough here, keep it stable. And now the chassis actually passes through the oil pan. So engine's real low, and the way I wanted to structure in one of my other videos, I talked about the structure of the car and the way I handle all of the load pass. And because of that, I had to machine this off. So that cross brace that you saw in my previous video actually runs through this, which meant I don't have any room for the oil filter. There's not enough height right here. So I had to go to a remote oil filter, which you can see right here. Um, because of that, I also had to modify the block. So this is... Uh, basically, I'm not using the oil passage inside the block that we're along on the side. Um, so basically, this is the uh, inlet back into the motor right here. And so this, this fitting will run down along here. 
kind of from here and then around and down and through this passway. And I'll have a little bulkhead right here, like I said, so I can make one of the connections. Um, and here's the outlet from the oiling system of the motor base, the pump. It's kind of hard to see, but right in there, there's a little fitting in a 90 degree that comes off the block. And that's this line. So this is actually the outlet of the oil pump, even though it's it's not dry sump. It's an internal wet or internal GM dry sump. It's called damp sump, whatever. But internal pump, this is actually the output of the pump. So it runs into the filter, uh, through the filter, out, and then it goes um, to the front of the car where it'll go through a cooler. And then once it comes back through the cooler, like I said, it's going to go out through here, through here. It returns back through here, back over here. And then it goes to this fitting. That's the return from the cooler. So now it's filtered. Uh, and cooled, ready to rock and roll. I um, also have the um, turbos right here. You can see this Y block right here. Obviously, this is real short line rubber again to metal right here so that you don't have too much rubber near the turbine housing. And this will have a, a blanket on it again. So uh, it, this won't be a problem even with the heat shield. You'll have a nice another turbo blanket here. And then the, the piece runs across here and that's, that feeds the turbo. And then I've got oil temp right here. And again, all the main harness stuff goes to that. It's just not plugged in right now. And then I've got oil pressure right here. And I also do water pressure um, on the water, uh, the water to air or water to oil cooler as well. Water pressure is a great way to see a coolant system problem because you blow a line off. It may not get hot very quickly. You may not even have water on the coolant temperature sensor. So you may actually not see uh, the temperature increasing very quickly. Uh, but you'll then you will overheat and you'll damage something because there's no water in the system. So uh, coolant pressure is, uh, you know, pretty valuable. Uh, also, you can see the, the braces on the on the accessory drive. So you've got this one, triangulates the back of this piece real nice, runs over to here. Kind of get in here, there we go, right here. And originally, I wanted to run another one off this brace, this other brace right here, you can see right here. I wanted to run it over to this other bolt right here. Maybe I'll go on the other side here. Let's see a little bit better. Yeah, so I wanted to go from here over to here as well, but it just got too tight with the cross member, and I was afraid it was going to bounce off the cross member when the engine's moving. I'm running a rubber motor mounts. The engine is rubber mounted, it's a street car, so if the engine's going to move around quite a bit, so I had to leave a lot of extra clearance, and I'm worried about that bouncing off. So I left that brace out of there. I think it'll be all right. Seems really stiff. We'll, we'll find out, I guess, but I can always add it back in if I really have to, maybe put a little bend in it or something to make it work. And then the other kind of trick to the accessory drive here is this brace I was talking about. Should have gone over here as well, but it runs over to here. And it's kind of dark, but ties in right here. That's the back of the alternator. This is actually a stud off the alternator and then ties into the block as well. So let's see if I can brighten it up. There you go. Brighten it up a little bit there so you can kind of see. Ties it all real nice together and it's super stiff. Um, I think that's it really for the motor. So I've still got a little bit left to do. I've got some weld bungs on the top of the valve covers that I need to do for um, uh, for the breather on the, the the crank or the crankcase and valve cover breathers, and finish wiring, um, wire up that bulkhead fitting. You know, finish looming all the wires, and that's about it. Make the transmission and stuff. So it's about ready to go in. Hopefully the final time, at least until it gets started. Of course, I'll probably run into some problems along the way, and I'll end up pulling it out a couple times. Um, but that's it. That's the motor package. Like I said, it should come in and out, kind of like a race car does, all in one piece. Um, should make my life, life a lot easier for maintenance and installation and everything else. One of the things about this car I wanted to make sure is it was enjoyable to work on, because any car that you race enough will break, and especially a completely hand-built car will break even more. <laughs> so... I need to make sure it was, uh, I didn't want to pull my hair out, you know, like my, my 911, man, it was horrible. The, uh, with the motor, the way it is, luckily I never really had any issues, knock on wood that I had to pull the motor out for something stupid, but even like doing injectors or something relatively minor involved, basically pulling the motor out. So I'm hoping that this is a one, it's a lot easier to work on. I won't have to do stuff like that. Um, but when it does come out, it'll come out real quickly and easily and get maintenance done and get put back together. That's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment. Thanks.